Good morning, saints. Great to be with you again today. Pastor Mercer here. Uh, This is your devotion for August 3rd. Our psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 68, verses 4 through 10. Our uh, New Testament reading, of course, we continue with the story of Paul. This is in Acts uh, 27, beginning with verse 9, as he continues to sail uh, for Rome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is Psalm 68. Um, Yeah, sorry. Psalm 68, verse 4. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exalt before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you shed abroad. You restored your inheritance as it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, You provided for the needy. We turn our attention to Acts 27, verse 9. Since much time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous because even the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. And because the harbor was not suitable to spend the winter in, the majority decided to put out to sea from there on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, facing both southwest and northwest and spend the winter there. Now when the south wind blew gently, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, They weighed anchor and sailed along Crete close to the shore. But soon a tempestuous wind called the Northeaster struck down from the land. And when the ship was caught and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along. Running under the lee of a small island called Cauda, we managed with difficulties to secure the ship's boat. After hoisting it up, they used supports to undergird the ship. Then fearing that they would run aground on this, on the Certus, they lowered the gear, and thus they were driven along. Since we were violently storm-tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told, but we must run aground on some island. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a great story. Take heart. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read this, uh, there's a reason that I did not serve in the Navy and I was in the Army. I'd, I would have had terrible, terrible sea legs. 
Uh, anytime I read about or I see ships being tossed about on the sea, and as, as uh, um, Luke often does, he describes everything here in great detail. And he's talking about the darkness that was, uh, they had not seen the sun for many days. And, you know, you despair. You can imagine they're in, they're in great despair. As Luke says here, they thought, well, this is it. Our lives are going to be lost here at sea. God gives Paul this great vision and says that, don't be afraid, men, because the God that I serve says that not one of you will perish. We're going to lose the ship, but not one of you are going to lose your lives. What, what hope this, this must have brought to many of them, uh, as I'm sure, uh, I'm uh, certain that uh, many of them that are on the ship here with, with Paul, they know that there's something about this guy. And, um, you know, and the, the other side of this, of course, is too that uh, God had uh, said, and he told Paul in this vision too, that he said, you must sail to Rome. Paul, I'm going to get you there, so it's not, it's not your time to die, to lose, to lose your life yet. Um, and, and in fact, all of these that you're on the ship with, Will not none of them will perish, um, and so there's great hope here as the ship is being tossed about and all of those things. Of course, where does my mind go when I think of water and and ships and perishing and all of that? Uh, we can think of the flood. We think of our baptism, where God carries us. Then in this ship of the ark, uh, the church that is here on earth, He nourishes us he sustains us with his word and sacrament and carries us across safely uh the the sea as we're tossed about by the by the winds and the seas of this life dear saints this isn't everything and what we have so much such a great thing to look forward to and that is everlasting life with jesus christ our lord so paul continues to sail here and uh, it's going to be great as, as uh, if you tune in with me again tomorrow uh, then we're going to see how this all how this all plays out there was a um, uh, I was thinking of the seventh petition of the Lord's Prayer is what I have here in my notes let's take a look at the seventh petition but deliver us from evil. What does this mean? We pray in this petition in summary that our Father in heaven would rescue us from every evil of body and soul, possessions and reputation, and finally when our last hour comes, give us a blessed end and graciously take us from this valley of sorrow to himself in heaven. We pray that he would rescue us from every peril, all of these things, and certainly we see this here that God has ordered, continues to order the steps of Paul and, and is protecting him. Even though this ship is going to be destroyed, not one life will be lost in this voyage. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll come back tomorrow and join me again. And we will see how, this, uh, how the, the, the things about the shipwreck and how this all, how this all plays out. All right, dear saints, have a great day and I will see you again tomorrow.